government, or if we want to call it the state, to use a more cruder term, is the instrument of the scholars that are ruling with Islam. It's an instrument of that. It's an instrument. Okay. It's an instrument. So it's just seen as part of um, society. Uh, and right. because Islam is sort of a holistic religion. That's right. So it believes that it uh, it it gives guidance on everything. That's right. Mm, okay. Okay. But, but, but you do see... It's interesting because if you look at Turkey, they consider themselves a secular state, That's right. um, whereas Iran is an Islamic republic. Right. Uh, but, but both countries have uh, majority Muslim populations. Right. So the, the thing, it, it, there is a difference. Not, not all, these con- not all Islam, Islamic countries have, a, have sort of uh, mixed religion with politics, if sure. you like. There is a difference between, say a Muslim country and an Islamic country. Right. Uh, a Muslim country will be a majority Muslim country. An Islamic country will be a country that is governed by uh, the revealed law. Uh, Iran is a country that is governed by uh, the uh, laws of the 12 or Shi'ar, the Ithni Ashadi, Jafari, what they call it, um, laws. And it is, it is held to that standard. They have about five books that they depend upon for legal theory that they use. Turkey, uh, officially, is a communist or socialist country that was overthrown. The government was overthrown in 1919, formally abolished everything in 1924, and the military has been pretty much ruling by force. So they are secular, maybe not because they want to be, but because they have to be. And the same thing applies for Egypt, which is a communist country, for Libya, which is a communist country, Tunisia, which is a communist country, and uh, Morocco, which is a secular monarchy and other countries along with it. So it's, it's, it's not so much of what the populace have decided. It's sort of what's been decided for them. Through the leaders. Yes. The leaders of, um, yeah, yes. it's <laughs> political that expedience. You cannot name one of the 48 countries that is not a military dictatorship or mm. an absolute monarchist system. You can't name one. The, okay, in terms of these, sec- <laughs> these secular con- so-called yeah. secular countries. Yeah. If we move on to etiquette and diet... Um, I mean, uh, in terms of eating uh, bef- before meals, you you must say a prayer. Is that is that right? We we are. It's it is highly commendable for us to recite uh, Bismillah wa ala barakatillah before eating food in the name of Allah and on the blessings of uh, the, the blessings of Allah uh, before we have food because uh, it's something that was done by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it adds blessing to the food. Mm. And by not reciting it, you lose out on blessings. So, something a bit, a bit uh, uh, Christian practice. It is a bit saying of a grace. Yeah, yeah saying yes. your grace. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Again, another similarity. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, eating, you yes. you 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 use only your right hand for eating and yes. drinking. That's right. Because the what tended to be the case is is we have been told uh, by the Prophet Muhammad's alive son of that the right hand is to be used for your noble things. Um, eating, drinking, um, shaking hands, whereas the left hand is used for your purification activities, cleaning oneself after they use the toilet oh, and okay. things like that. So if you're around uh, Muslims or you're meeting a Muslim for the first time to shake hands, to stick out the left hand is not really a good idea. If okay. you want to get off to a bad start with a host and you're going to a Muslim country or you're going to meet Muslims to sort of... Uh, stick out your left hand for shaking first is mm. kind of uh, not a good idea and um, circumcision of male males yes I, is that widespread S- practice circum circumcision of males is compulsory uh, based upon a hadith of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it is mm. uh, compulsory uh, because it represents the covenant that was made four thousand years ago between uh, Allah and the Prophet Ibrahim salam. So it is a covenant. It's the sign mm. for the m- for the Muslim male generally is the covenant in the flesh. Oh, okay. Uh, whereas for the female, it will be normally the hijab when they see that, when people see that. So whereas the male, the Muslim mm. male's sign is normally hidden from the general population. When when do you get the circumcision at birth? Or? The circumcision is done on the eighth day after birth. Okay. Um, in terms of funerals. Um, a Muslim must be buried pretty quickly. Yes, it should be straight straight away. We often tend to try to, if we're able to answer the questions of the um, uh, of the death committee or the coroner's department quickly, 
often will have the body released to us later that day or the next day so we can bury it straight away okay. we don't we don't now some the scholars are averse to the scholars are averse to autopsies if they're uh, just done without reasoning. Mm -hmm. But if there is a murder involved, the scholars do make concession for that. As long as the organs removed or the things removed are put back in, the body's sewn, sewn back up. And uh, you just can't eat anything if you're Muslim, can you? Uh, no. Uh, the dietary laws are pretty simple if you compare them, say, to the 200 dietary laws that Jews may have. We as Muslims are not to consume intoxicants, um, pork, uh, any land animal with fangs, or any bird having talons. We are not to consume any of those animals. And you can't consume blood? No. Or alcohol? No. We don't consume those at all. Okay. Um, just moving on to jihad. Yes. Um, cause this is again has been in the news because of terrorism. Absolutely. Um, but is jihad just for terrorists? Jihad has two aspects to it. There is the what is called the offensive jihad, in which the scholars or those who the scholars have appointed dispatch an army to a particular location to fight. All right, it can be preemptive, it can be an offensive stratagem, it can be an attack. The second type of jihad is what's called a, a defensive jihad. So the offensive jihad is the qital and the defensive jihad is normally called difa. This defensive jihad doesn't require permission from the scholars in cases like, for example, defending your house from burglars, defending yourself from people who are trying to assault you, uh, defending, defending your land from sudden invasion. Mm. So people in Iraq, when the Americans came and said, we're removing Saddam, there were many people in Iraq just basic people they didn't need to be told they said we're being invaded mm -hmm. Saddam is bad but the Americans are bad as well because they're invading and so they took it upon themselves to declare jihad as a people defending themselves the Chechens have done the same thing the Afghanis have done the same thing the Kashmiris have done the same thing the Muslims in Cambodia Laos Vietnam Upper Tibet Mongolia mm -hmm. Tajikistan uh, those are so not everyone that's engaged in jihad is necessarily following an expansionist policy. Mm. The Chechens, we have no uh, information regarding them outside of Chechnya, uh, ramming planes into buildings or anything. Their battle has solely been focused on Ingusitia soil against Russian occupation. The Mongols, the Mongolian people, we haven't seen any Mongolian people uh, in London doing anything. They've been awfully quiet. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they've been defending Mongolia. <laughs> That's what their issue has been. I've just got a text message here from one of the listeners. Just going back to the diet, um, you, you mentioned um, certain things that you can't eat. Right. Could you just state why you couldn't? Why you why you're prohibited from eating these things? Okay. Um, so like pork. Th yes, and pork, alcohol, blood. Uh, yes, blood. Anything sacrificed to idols. Those those things is because of a, uh, a an ayah, Surah al Ma'id, the fifth surah, ayah 90, in which Allah forbade us from these things, and also not consuming any land animals with fangs or any birds bearing talons, uh, because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari said he 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 said for us do not consume any land animals bearing fangs or any birds bearing talons, and so because of that. We've, we've abstained. Okay. Um, so it's, it's a bit like in the Bible where Leviticus says... That's right. It's not as detailed. I mean, the, the Jewish laws are really detailed, but <laughs> it's, it's not as detailed. Okay. Um, if we move on swiftly to some other elements of Islam that people are familiar with, like a, a mosque. Yes. Uh, simply just a place of worship, isn't it? Yes. The, the, the masjid is a place in which the Muslims gather there for for the for the five congregational prayers because what will happen is the five prayers uh, people can pray them individually but it is highly prized that people gather together and pray them in congregation mm. whenever possible so there'll be people that for the Fajr prayer the daybreak prayer or the Dhuhr prayer or Asr Maghrib Isha will try to pray it in the masjid and that's 
the mosque is not just for Friday because some people think that mosque is only for Friday. Some among the Muslims treat it like that, mm. but no, it's not just for it's not just for Friday. Friday is when people have the congregational prayer. Now that is very important, but throughout the rest of the week, it's also there for that reason. Okay. Um, <laughs> that person who texting is, is is still asking, going back to food again, saying that they still can't get the rational. Uh, as in, I guess they're asking, is it like a law? You just can't. Yes, eat. it is. It is a revealed law that okay. is that has been revealed. Now, if someone is saying, if if they mean by that, what is what is the rationale in terms of what is the law? I've I've I tried to mention exactly where the source is where they mention that. Yes. If they're saying where's the rationale, sort of from a health standpoint, um, Muslims don't abstain from certain. Uh, foods merely for the health benefits although yes. you can find that mm. sometimes there are health wisdoms like the trichinosis worm regarding pork and regarding animals that uh, have talons or fangs because they eat blood they have a higher percentage of uh, ammonium and phosphates in their bloodstream those are sort of wisdoms but they're not really the basis for why we do it the okay. basis is the Lord said so, but the wisdoms that we benefit from, and we can say, yeah, because there's high ammonium and high phosphate count in the blood, and it can be dangerous. It can cause you, you know, these and this and that problem later in life, and so on and so forth. Let's look at um, family life in Islam. Right. Um, so the man is seen as the head of the house. The man is. He's the meant to bring head. in all the money. The man is the spiritual head of the house, mm. um, as is mentioned uh, in Surah Tunisa, where Allah said, "Men." are the maintainers of women. What that means is um, the man is responsible for being the breadwinner. If the woman doesn't want to work, he cannot force the woman to work. The man, this is another thing that's not mentioned, the man also must pay the wife maintenance. So this is not just maintaining the house, but this is uh, spending money and th there's a maintenance. Some people and this have is a, all laid down Yeah, this is laid Quran. down. Yeah, this is laid down very clearly. Mm. But some people don't read those verses. But... Uh, people who do uh, take the main maintenance of the wife very seriously that well she's got to be maintained and she can set the maintenance at whatever standard that she's used to in her lifestyle I've seen women that have set their maintenance at a thousand a week and that, that's a, that thousand a week is what they receive for their upkeeping of the house they're mm. spending money they receive a thousand a week in maintenance well wow. and um, polygamy that's polygamy. that's perfectly normal in Unacceptable. Uh, I, I can say that I myself, I grew up in a polygamous household. My father was. Um, uh, some other members in our family were. Um, Surah Tunisa, the fourth Surah 3, uh, Allah has mentioned that a man may have two, three, or up to four, four wives. However, again, all of those wives have to receive maintenance unless they waive it. And there are certain laws and rulings that concern uh, polygamy. Um, the wives, if they demand separate housing, they must be housed uh, separately. They all must know about each other. Uh, so because obviously that's going to affect the maintenance, um, they must be treated according to their standard of living. So one wife may need only 500 a week. Another wife needs 2000 a week. They have to be treated according to their standard of living. And if you're going to get m married, uh, the groom pays a bridal gift. Uh, that is correct. That is called mm. the mahar. That gift can be that gift is set by the woman, and can be any amount. It's um, set by the woman, not the woman's the family. Woman, not the woman's family, although some families do set it, but it is supposed to be set by the woman. So if the woman says, "I merely want a ring," you get a ring. If the woman says, "I want eleven thousand pounds," I mean, she can set it for anything. Mm -hmm. In the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, women used to set the meher. Some of them used to set it for a gold talent. Which is, which is a chest full of gold. Some of them used to set it for mm. 400 dirhams, which is a dirhams 14 pounds. So you maxim, ma multiply 14 by 400. They used to have that type of money. Wow. Um, and, and what about, um, since we're talking about family and, and, and women, um, what about the, 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 the way the women dress in terms of um, you know, covering their, he their head and, yes. and so on? Are these things prescribed in the Quran or is it just culture? Okay. Cultural demands, you know, the burqa. Yes. Uh, uh, in, in the Quran, in the Quran, there are four verses that discuss hijab. Surah Al-Hazab, the 33rd Surah 59. Surah Al-Nur, the 24th Surah 31. The Surah uh, is a chapter. That's right. right. Um, Surah Al-Nur, the 20, 24th Surah Ayat, ayat 50 through 60. Um, and there's also uh, Surah Al-Hazab, the 33rd Surah Ayat uh, 50 onwards. Those ayat discuss 
in detail as long, uh, along with about 50 other ahadith or things in the statements of the Prophet Muhammad on 